in the lean season that is the period when people are uh, f- uh, have have just gone to their farms and fields and planted and they are waiting for the harvest that in this period when they do not have they usually do not have enough supplies we would probably have about 5.5 million people who would be um, approximately in need of uh, who will be facing severe food insecurity and would need uh, food assistance with COVID-19, how is that impacting people's ability to access food? And also, how is that impacting the ability for the World Food Program or other organizations and governments to bring food to the people who need it, to the people in refugee camps, to the people in IDP camps, those really most vulnerable people? Exactly. And I would even start from that point. It's the point of the supply chains, because if the supply chains are not working, if we are, if as a result of the restrictions and movements, we are not able to move uh, uh, um, the necessary support for people, that's a real difficulty, not only for humanitarian organizations, but even for, for businesses, even for the, the, the governments and the communities. So let's take the example of the Sahelian countries. Most of these countries are landlocked. Burkina Faso, Mali, uh, Niger, they're landlocked, which means that if they need supplies, whether it's goods for the normal uh, services in the country or if even when it's um, uh, humanitarian uh, supplies, they have to come in through the coastal countries and have to move in. Now, what we have been urging, and we have, we have to say that there is there's, uh, there's a positive uh, nod towards that, we've, what we've been urging the government is that they should understand that these supply chain, these supply chains need to be maintained. We need to be able to have both for the humanitarian purposes, but also for the commercial purposes to supply the, 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 the people that there is access and there is movement so that you can get um, supplies, whatever they may be, to communities. In Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, where there's a lot of conflict, you know, what needs to be done in terms of the conflict to at least ease things right now? Is there any indication that some of these armed groups or, or governments or whoever it, it may be uh, are reducing the amount of military operations to help uh, uh, or, or allow things to improve a bit during COVID-19? The highest levels of food insecurity, the places where we had to do most of our work in the world were in places where there was conflict. And so if you if you if you if you eliminate that, if you find a way to bring peace, if we find a way to dialogue, if we find a way to ensure that people live in conditions where their lives are not disrupted and their livelihoods are not disrupted, there's a there's a possibility that you lower the chances of people in food insecurity. And therefore, that would be the message. That is a message of peace. Maybe this is something that comes to remind us that we need to find a way to live together.